Um, so I first started coming to church last month, last March, last year. Um, but I wasn't really fully committed. Um, growing up, there was a lot of tough times. I grew up in a very toxic household, a lot of arguments, a lot of fights. Um, I didn't really feel that much love growing up, to be honest. Um, so I skipped to when I was 14. Due to stuff that was happening in the home, I was taken into foster care. Um, being in foster care, especially as a teenager, I felt very trapped, very alone. Didn't really, I was, I was lost and I didn't really understand my purpose. I didn't really think I had a purpose. Um, had a lot of suicide attempts um, to the point where I got sectioned and I was given medication. Um, and then I came out, um, I got my own place when I was 18 and moving in with no guidance into a house, like to an apartment by yourself was very much scary. But um, then I got into a very toxic relationship and I always told myself I didn't want to be how my parents were. Um, but I saw myself getting into that sort of relationship. So it started off with arguments and then it got physical and then I was like, I'm saying I don't want to be like my mom or want to be with, you know, in a toxic relationship, but I'm not doing nothing to change it. I'm doing the same things that she was doing. So I realised I had to make a step. Um, and I remember just crying out to God one night. I said, God, if I surrender to you, if I leave this person knowing because I didn't think I could get any better, but I was like, God, I'm going to sacrifice that and I'm going to put my feelings to the side and serve you and just please just just hold on to me. Don't let me go. So I did that. Um, I came back in October. Um, I got saved. And honestly, I've never felt so much peace, so much joy ever. And I'm not talking about joy, alcohol, um, weed, like all that type of stuff, true joy, and that can only come from Jesus Christ, no one else is going to give it to you, and nothing else that is going to give it to you, the things that you might be doing now is temporary, it's not worth it, um, and if you are wondering, what, like, is God real, is he actually going to be, why would he forgive me of my sins, if he can do it for me and others like me, he can do it for you, so just, just,
So, so for those who don't know my name, uh, my name is Matthew Ter. I've been in this church for a very long time. Not exactly since from birth, but when I was born, my parents decided for me that that I'd be raised in a good home, and they were looking for places to raise me up, teach me good values. So they decided to look for a church for me to go to. They looked for many churches, Greek churches, Orthodox, Catholics, and then eventually they were led to here. And it was in this church that I grew up. I was taught by many people, Uncle Festus, many, many people. I, I can't count how many people, but I was taught how to grow up, how to be a man. But there came a point in a time where I just felt like I didn't belong. Like I was slightly different. I can enjoy different things, like different music, different tastes. I struggled to get along with people. Uh, I wasn't much of a talker, and that kind of sense of difference started to draw me away from this church. That maybe, maybe the world was a better option. So slowly and slowly, I kind of drew apart. This was around 2022, 2023. I glimpsed into the world. I just looked like, okay, parties. Maybe that's something. Looked into these relationships and like, really? Is that it? Now I never went that far. God kept me safe. He kept me safe through all these times, through all these mental assaults, all these silly little ideas that the enemy implanted into my head. He kept me safe. That even when I was in my darkest points, that even when I was struggling, like, okay, I've had enough of family and whatnot. I've had enough of siblings being alone in this church. That okay, come June. July 2023, bunny, I'm going to go to university and live my own life, that I'm going to be separate. But God kept me. Before that even happened, January 2023, God sent someone, Pastor Carmel, he spoke to me, he told me of a destiny that everything that I faced through at that point that's the enemy trying to take me away from destiny. That's the enemy trying to take me through home, away from home, where I belong. Yes. I realized that the world has no place for me. And guess what? It has no place for you. Drugs, alcohol, parties, meaningless. They all pass away. The next day you're feeling down. Emotions, Happiness on top of the mountain all come crashing down into the short ravine of death. That's what sin does. Now God kept me safe, but maybe you've gone through, maybe you're down in the ravine yourself. But I found my home. And this home is open for you as well. God has kept me, he, he has brought me up from that ravine and he, he can bring you up from that ravine as well. No longer do you need to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The Father's arms is open wide. Come accept tonight.
Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Hazel. Um, I grew up in this church. Uh, my mum became a Christian when uh, she fell pregnant with me. It's a bit of a messy situation. Um, so I've been in church since I was one. I'm now 33. Um, I know I don't look it, but I'm now 33. Um, uh, I was a very good child. Like I was, I was, I was well behaved. Um, I never really gave my mum any trouble. Um, some of you may have heard this story before. When I was 21, <coughs> me and my mum were at home, and I think it was the Euros, and we were having a pizza, watching the football, and we got a knock on the door, and it was two plain clothes police officers. And they basically told us, your address has been compromised. My mum works for the government. Your address has been compromised. We need to get you out of this house immediately. So at first, I was like, <laughs> all right, all right, mate. He's like, no, we need to go. I was like, okay. So literally we packed our bags, I had a rucksack, got in the police car, um, they took us to a safe address, and it still didn't register really, I think. I was messaging one of my friends, like, I can't believe it, I feel like I'm in a movie. And um, yeah, basically never went back to that address ever again. And ever since then, I can say that we lived in a hotel for a year, then we went into temporary accommodation for, for a year, there was just, it was very, uh, just felt like I had been uprooted and home is somewhere that you know you go there and it's your sanctuary you find peace you know you get home from a long day at work and you're <sighs> and for about two years of my life I never had that and home became something that I just couldn't grasp living in a hotel and living in just all these different places with a backpack home just became just I couldn't I could never feel like I was at home and I remember that, that happened on a Thursday I came to church on the Sunday and I remember walking through the door and just relief and I burst into tears because I realized that this is, this is at, at that point, that was the only place that I could call home. That was my anchor. That was one of the only places that I felt like I was home. One of the things that really s stuck with me during that whole period was just how things can change in an instant. I'm literally sitting there in my house and then suddenly I don't have a home. I don't, I don't have anywhere to live. I live in a hotel with my mum, I've got a backpack and that's it. And things can change in an instant. This, this concert that we put on, it's called Welcome Home. And we're not just saying, you know, as much as this is our home, earth is not our home. There's a heavenly home, heaven is our home. And there's people here, everyone on this stage can tell you that that is their home. Not their physical home, but that is their home. And there's people here, maybe you don't have that assurance. You don't know where your home is. Because we're all heading towards eternity. One day Jesus is going to come back for his people and you have to make a decision. You can't sit on the fence. It's like a lorry coming at you full speed and you're standing in the middle of the road saying, no, it's not coming, it's coming. It's coming for you. And you have to make a decision. Where will you spend eternity? Where's your home? I'm going to sing a song that I've been singing since I was 18, since I actually was living in that home, and I now sing that song. With just a, It's different now, because that taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about myself, and it taught me a lot about what it means to be a Christian. It's not just... It's not just, you know... There's just so much more to it. When you realise that your, the physical, what you have, what, that home that I thought I had, it's just, it's not there. But heaven is. And I now sing this song differently because I know now where my home is. It's not in Woodford, it's in heaven. That's where I want to get to. And that should be a question that you ask yourself because eternity is a long time. You are dead longer than you are alive. You don't want to make the wrong decision. So I pray this song speaks to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Gonna wrap my arms around my daddy's neck Tell him that I missed him And tell him all about the woman I became Hope that it pleased him So much I want to say So much that I want God to know When I finally upon the throne of the king frozen in my stay and all the questions that Oh.